You see, I needed the haircut, Willie. Sergeant Willie Pete, you are not the first black man to speak on this subject on YouTube. You are the most clear. Get your shit straight. Don't give yourself fucking horns that people don't want to toot for you. Okay. Now, little brother, I understand exactly what you're saying. So this video is out to you, Sergeant Willie Pete. This is Hood Report 2. I go back to the hood. You know, it was Christmas Eve to go visit my brother. And um, it was a pretty good visit. I drove through the old neighborhood, the same hood where I told you the baby had <laughs> his drink on. And I saw him too. I'll get back to that later. So this time it was different in the hood. Wasn't no chicken heads out and about. Young brothers was out selling their wares. Um, the women that I came across, uh, the attitudes were a lot fresher and cleaner. You know, I just didn't see the ignified, stupid ones out in the street because there was more of a, a holiday feel. The adults were, their adults were out. And, and, and this time in the hood, it was completely different. I, I saw something in my little brother that I didn't see before. And um, saw a little of myself in him, too. Um, the situation is, in the hood, from what I saw, the kicking it and the chilling, smoking of the blunts, the drinking, and just the overall hood mentality had a different flavor to it. It was... It was a weird feeling. It was like it was calm. It was a calm in the hood. Um, taking my little brother through the neighborhood and me and, you know, the brother above him because I'm the oldest son that came out of my mother. I just know the story. So I took him through the neighborhood and me and my brother Dex, MX, can't say Dex without the MX, was um, young in the early 80s and I was showing him where I used to sell coke and um, I was telling him about the time when me and my brother run up to the car and um, we got our hands in the car you know you get ready to serve him and shit and he's like we hear this noise hey how many they giving them look back in hey how many they giving them and I looked down as a little kid and he looked up at me and he yelled back to the other guy one remember this is in the 80s the same the last time. And then the voice from the apartment down there said, Give him two. And I don't forget, that was the last day me and my brother Dex and Max tried to serve Coke up in the hood back in the day. I do not endorse or advocate people selling drugs, doing drugs, or any of that shit. This is an adult telling a story about a time and a period in life where shit was hectic and you had to get it down you had to put it down to survive things aren't like that now but the mentality in the hood is pretty much the same but it wasn't that many people out wasn't no little kids selling dope wasn't no babies passing rocks this time when I went back to the hood people was in their Christmas mode and that changes everything the, the, the ghetto hood stupid attitude was gone no rolling of the eyes. No, who is this nigga standing there? Cause, hey, I walked up on some fools didn't even know me with my brother. And shoot, I was the hood mode. Had my little shit. I'm in hood mode. I'm OG status. I come up old. And shit was cool. I'm like, I had to break it all down to life. Nice guy again. I'm like, Oh shit. You didn't hear all the stupid ass fucking talking. All the talking dumb. I didn't hear none of that this time. I didn't hear these people was all like, you know, I gotta get a job, I gotta do this, blah, 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 blah. And um, little sister-in-law, she's like, man, my baby want to handle my Montana guitar and shit, and I gotta get her this one, I want that one, I want this one, I want it. You know, uncle that had no goddamn money. Uncle would have broken it off. You know, but um, it was a different feeling in the hood. 
And don't get me wrong, and I show would love for this to be the reason, but they probably found hope in this man. They they found something. Good man. They was talking about them some Obama. Things gonna be better now. See, there's hope. There's a chance for our people. There's, people want to do something. And these are youngsters. Don't want to be on the grind. They don't want to have to sell weed and coke to survive. They want to just live. Don't get me wrong. I said the adults were out. The adults were out shopping. When I went through the hood hood, deep underneath there, down there by the starter, damn. You people out there who watch my videos, who get pissed off when I answer the phone, understand one thing. And I don't want you to be mad. If somebody call here about giving me a job to feed my family and take tomorrow to the day after tomorrow and the day after tomorrow to next week, put me on some work that's going to last more than three or four months, make me work. Don't enslave me, but make me work. I need it. I'm going to answer the phone. So Sergeant Willie Pete, man, girls with the big old asses, the big old booties, the fucked up hood mentality. When I started on YouTube, one of the first people that made me speak out was you. You're right about that. A lot of people wouldn't have spoke because of, of Willie Pete, but you wasn't the first. There's a lot of people who talked about black situations, but they didn't take it to the extreme in what you did. And I'm saying you're extreme in what you say. You're extreme to those who can't understand what you're saying. In other words, you're saying some shit to some people who don't see it like you do. And as long as people don't see it like you do, there is hope for the black woman and the black man. Because not everything I see is seen by people over there. You are in a region, brother. And a part of this region, you're in a part of a part of a region. And I have seen everything you have seen. But I don't see it where I'm at now. But when I go back, I seen it. But the last time I went back, I didn't see it like that. Because my mind had opened up, not just to the things that you had told me. Because you, you told me last time when I looked. I looked for what you were saying last time. And I looked for what you were saying this time. And I didn't see it this time. Same neighborhood. Same hood. Same brothers hanging out. Same dreams that I had. Same area what I did bad in. One thing I didn't like about that trip. When I used to call myself the Imperial DJ Commander. Lonzo Lover. Easy Scratch. When I was the only man in the townhouses with the real moves. Me and my brother, when they did construction around there, we'd go over there into the cement and put our names in the cement. There's one spot right at the apartment where we grew up in. And I looked. My motherfucking name ain't there no more. But that's good. They had to fix the unit up. But my brother's name is still there. And for his little brother to see that, these guys tell me stories and I don't believe them. But when somebody shows you something and you see it for yourself, you realize and you come to a certain point of reality. The game is thick. You have to carry yourself a hell of a lot better than that. And not everything you see is actually visually what you thought you saw. It's how you decipher the moment and bring it into your computer and understand when you decipher the messages from all the images that you see that life has a place for us. And it ain't on YouTube. 